Hey YouTube, it's Eric. Um, I was just doing some reading tonight, and I came across this. Uh, this it was. It's more like it's. It was an article. That's. Uh, it was this paper called the Covert uh, Information Bulletin. I'm not sure if they're still publishing, but I found. Um, it was a 1986 issue of this Covert uh, Covert Action Information Bulletin. A 1986 issue, but it was. I found some really good reading. In particular, there was uh, an article on the Knights of Malta and uh, Alan Dulles's role in Operation Sunshine. There's also a really good article on uh, Klaus Barbie, who was a Nazi war criminal who was uh, uh, <clears throat> who escaped in uh, Operation Sunrise. There's lots of information on Paperclip as well. Here's the. I upload this to archive.org. It's still. Uh, Synthesizing, but you can. I link this in the description. But this is the uh, cover page here. You see Covert Action Information Bulletin number 25. It's, it's a special edition Nazis, the Vatican, and, and the CIA. It's fully illustrated as well. Uh, some really good pictures in here. Good information on uh, Joseph Mengel as well. Um, in particular, the first article here. I've read Alan Dulles in the SS. I'm just going to show you some information from uh, this. This article in particular is very good. The Knights of Malta Examined by Francois Hervet on page 27 to 39. And uh, I have this page open here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go into the comment section for it. Give me a second. Because if you guys remember the video I did on, uh, I I played a video of Ronald Reagan, uh, getting his night getting a medal from the Knights of Malta, at the Knights of Malta convention in uh, or at their dinner at the Waldorf Astoria in 1989. You know, see, there's an in this article it's covered uh, the Knight of Malta, who was the president when Reagan was uh, made a Knight of Malta, was a uh, J. Peter Grace, and this article talks about how J. Peter Grace was uh, his involvement in Operation Paperclip. I'll show you a bit of that. Here, like just reading from this uh, from the uh, article, the American Association of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta. Important to note, the mil the Knights of Malta have a permanent United Nations observer status, and they are sovereign to international law. We see here in Europe, the Knights of Malta membership has been traditionally limited to those who could prove a requisite purity of noble blood for several generations. Nevertheless, as a concession to the rising political, economic, and military power of the United States. In 1927, the Knights of Malta agreed to incorporate an American National Association whose members were not obliged to prove their genealogical pedigree. When the American Association of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta was created in 1927, the founding members included Patrick Cardinal Hayes, Edward L. Hearn, who was also the head of the Knights of Columbus at one point, Nicholas Frederick Brady. I've done a video on Nicholas Frederick Brady and how he donated millions of dollars to the Jesuit order and his wife donated uh, her Innisfada mansion, uh, the Brady Innisfada mansion to the Jesuit order. Howard F. Carey is a Knight of Malta, Patrick E. Crowley, uh, James A. Farrell, James A. Fain, Edward N. Hurley, James J. Fellon, Morgan J. O'Brien, John J. Raskob, and John D. Ryan. John J. I have a book on John J. Raskob. It's titled uh, Everybody Ought to Be Rich, uh, The Life and Times of John J. Raskob. Um, there's just lots of information on his Vatican ties in that book, uh, the one I just sourced. You can find that book on uh, LibGen. We see here, by 1941, Francis Cardinal Spellman was listed as, quote, the grand protector and, quote, the spiritual advisor of the order. With John J. Raskob as treasurer, members included John Farrell, then president of U.S. Steel, Joseph P. Grace, who is a J, J. Peter Grace, is a descendant of Joseph P. Grace, and John D. Ryan, who I think is a descendant of Thomas Fortune Ryan, <laughs> uh, who like um, who was the richest. Thomas Fortune Ryan was the richest man in America, a papal knight who bank bankrolled the Tommy Gun uh, funding. Hey, how's it going, Jeremiah? Oh yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm keeping those. I'm keeping. Yeah, Chelsea could be a Clinton. Also, you know, Jeb Bush could be also. I could see him running as well. Here's a, here's an interesting connection to the Knights of Malta at the, here. Um, or actually, speak, like, actually, this article talks about the uh, the business plot with General Smedley Butler. In 1934, Raskob, inspired by the French fascist Croix de Foix and working closely with the Morgan Banks, John Davis, had been a principal financier 
in a plot to organize a fascist coup in the U.S. The plan failed when General Smedley Butler, who had been set up to lead the project, denounced it. And this uh, this Knight of Malta, I, 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 this, this is a prominent name here, Joseph J. Larkin. He's, he was the vice president of Chase Manhattan Bank in charge of the European affairs, which kept Chase open in Nazi-occupied Paris throughout the World War, uh, World War II. And you see here, um, Joseph J. Larkin received an Order of the Grand Cross of the Knights of Malta from Pope Pius XI in 1928. And Joseph G., uh, Joseph J. Larkin was an ardent supporter of General Franco and, by extension, Hitler. <laughs> and actually, um, yeah, Franco was a Knight of Malta. I know that. Um, Here's a picture here. There's lots of good pictures in this article. Here's the Grand Master Angelo de Mojana de Colonna, flanked by the Grand Chancellor on the right. Uh, there, there is a uh, lots of good information in here. There's actually it's okay. Here's J. Peter J. Peter Grace. So I'll, I'm gonna show you that just uh, Ronald Reagan. I'm going to show you the, the, the image of J. Peter Grace. Yeah, this is J. Peter Grace right here. Oh, that's not J. Peter Grace. That's J. Peter Grace right here. I'll get another shot of him. Okay, that's him right there. Okay, we see here J. Peter Grace was working in Operation Paperclip. Um, you see here, on uh, January 6, 1980, ABC TV broadcast uh, a special, quote, news close-up, uh, quote, Escape from Justice, Nazi War Criminals in America, end quote, which discussed Grace's role in Project Paperclip. A transcript of the program available from ABC on request states that, quote, Project Paperclip from the end of World War II to the mid-1950s brought more than 900 German scientists to the United States. Otto Ambrose was a chemist and director of the notorious IG Farben Company, which supplied gasoline and rubber for Hitler's war effort. Ambrose played a supervisory role in the construction of Farben's plant in the Polish village of Auschwitz. For IG Farben, Auschwitz concentration uh, inmates provided plentiful of source of cheap labor. The Nuremberg prosecution charged them each day at Farben's plant. 100 people died from sheer exhaustion. Otto Ambrose was convicted of slavery and mass murder and sentenced to eight years in prison. But, a, but even while on trial at Nuremberg, Ambrose was a target for the U.S. recruiters from Project Paperclip. I'll pull up the name of the Nazi here. You're going to see this. Otto Ambrose uh, became employed by Peter Grace's company. So he's a German chemist and Nazi war criminal. See right here. He developed nerve agents such as sarin and taboon. Um, there's, he was tried at Nuremberg for crimes against humanity. And you see a release from prison. <laughs> see here, oh, look at this. He, uh, uh, after his release, Otto Ambrose became an advisor to chemical companies such as W.R. Grace, look at that, Dow Chemical, as well as the U.S. Army Chemical Corps. And Nazi chemist Otto Ambrose became a personal advisor to the Knight of Malta Chancellor Conrad Joseph Eidenhower. Would you look at that? And there's information on Eidenhower in this uh, bulletin that I'm referencing here. <clears throat> Uh, but you see, you see here, um, Otto Ambrose's uh, prison sentence was commuted only after three years by American officials, and he was helped in a bid to enter the United States by Knight of Malta J. Peter Grace, president of W.R. Grace, a major American chemical company. An internal State Department document describes how J. Peter Grace helped Otto Ambrose in his efforts to enter the U.S., um, in a memorandum to the U.S. ambassador to Germany, Grace acknowledges that Ambrose was a war criminal, but he adds that in the years he had known Ambrose, that being J. Peter Grace, quote, we had developed a very deep admiration, not only for his ability, but more importantly, for his character in terms of truthfulness and integrity, end quote. Um, yes, you see right there, uh, Otto Ambrose be like, uh, became employed by this, uh, you know, Nazi, uh, <laughs> as big as a Nazi war criminal as it can get, Otto Ambrose became employed at Knight of Malta, J. Peter Grace's company, and he also worked for the U.S. Army Dow Chemical and was a uh, personal advisor to the Chancellor of West Germany, the Knight of Malta, Conrad Eidenhower. But uh, there's, 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 there's a Knight of Malta that was mentioned here that was like an assistant to the Knight of Malta, James J. Angleton. I just want to see if I can find that source here. There's information. If you watch my videos on the connection between the CIA and Pro-Dio, 
there's mentioning of uh, the role of uh, or Felix A. Morlian was the D Dominican priest who was uh, who set up the Catholic Proteo Intelligence Agency that merged with the OSS. Um, while uh, Knight of Saint Sylvester, uh, Will Don Wild Bill Donovan uh, was operating. There's information here on Myron Charles Taylor as well, who was uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt and Harry Truman, who both uh, spoke at Fordham University. Truman got an honorary degree at Fordham. Myron Charles Taylor was both Roosevelt and Truman's personal representative to the Pope. And there's documentation in this article of um, Tru of uh, Myron Taylor getting his Knight of Malta. Okay, you see right here, Truman's Vatican envoy. Myron C. Taylor received the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, Grand Corky A. Marato, Con Placa, May 23rd, 1945. <clears throat> and James J. Angleton received his uh, Knight of... Uh, yeah, James J. Angleton got his Croco Almerito Secondola class from the order the same day as uh, George Raymond Roca. And look, this was the name here. So George, Nate, Jamin, George Raymond Roca. I'll put this guy's name in here. How you spell it? Yeah, George Raymond Roca. He doesn't have a Wikipedia page. He was, he was a knight of Malta right here. There's a Washington Post did an article on them. I'll link this in the description. But this intelligence bulletin says here that Knight of Malta Roca went on to become Knight of Malta, James J. Angleton's deputy chief of counterintelligence of the division of the CIA and was the liaison between the Warren Commission and the CIA, that being Knight of Malta, George Raymond Roca, following the Kennedy assassination. Interestingly, uh, it was... Um, I haven't seen documentation that Charles Douglas Jackson was a Knight of Malta, but Charles Douglas Jackson um, worked in the OSS, which was literally littered with Knights of Malta. And Charles Douglas Jackson was the head of the American wing of the Bilderberg Group. He was officially known as the quote, the CIA's inside man at Time Magazine. It was uh, Charles, du Charles Douglas Jackson met with the Jesuit uh, Joseph Rettinger when Rettinger toured America, when uh, the pre Bilderberg plans. But, um, Charles, uh, Douglas Jackson, interestingly, like bought the Sapruder film, and he was very connected to the CIA. There's information here also about the Knight of Malta, Luigi Guetta, who was Pope Pius XII's uh, personal doctor. And Luigi Guetta also worked with Joseph Rettinger. I have the Joseph Rettinger memoirs. They're titled, the book's called uh, Memoirs of an Eminence Grice. It was published in uh, 1972, but Rettinger talks about how he reached out to Luigi Guetta to uh, found the Bilderberg Group. There's information on Geta in this uh, in this article as well. Good information on uh, James J. Angleton. It's, it's just a good bulletin. Jay, I, actually, I, I got to look into more of the connections with Hoover and the Nazis now, because uh, when looking into Hoover's connections with the Jesuits, you know, it fascinated me how close Hoover was to the Jesuits, even getting the sword of Loyola. Uh, the Jesuit priest Robert S. Lloyd, like J. Edgar Hoover, gave the Robert S. Lloyd S.J. Uh, a chalice, and uh, Hoover said that the Jesuit Robert Lloyd was known as the chaplain to the FBI. Even the Jesuit uh, priest Edmund Walsh was uh, speaking at like the FBI National Police Academy, and just with Robert S. Lloyd S.J., like he spoke at 39 consecutive uh, police academy <laughs> uh, invocations, and like the, there were like hundreds of FBI agents going to the Jesuit Manresa retreat house in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. I thought that was fascinating. Here's a Knight of Malta. Like this, here's a picture you see here, Myron Taylor and Reinhard Gellin. See, this is a picture here, this Knight of Malta, Croci al Moreto. Here's the source document shows Knights of Malta honor bestowed on Hitler's intelligence chief, Reinhard Gellin. And uh, J. Edgar Hoover, like, I thought it was fascinating that uh, Cardinal Richard Cushing said that in these parts, uh, quote, or this is what uh, the Archbishop of Boston said, uh, Richard Cushing said that, quote, in these parts, when I quote J. Edgar Hoover, it's just like quoting the Pope, end quote. Um, there's lots of information, too, on Alan Dulles in this article. And keep in mind that Alan Dulles has a, his nephew, Avery Dulles, became a Jesuit priest. And here's a lot of information, too, on this Knight of Malta, Baron Luigi Perilli, who is in the CIA document that I put up on my blog. And I titled the article, CIA Documentation Claims uh, Alan Dulles Met with Heinrich Himmler. But this Baron Luigi Perilli was very prominent.
And this uh, this article also says that uh, the Knights of Malta or General Mark Clark became a Knight of Malta, which is interesting. Um, <clears throat> And she, this, this, this part, this was interesting too. If you watch the, if you or uh, listen to when I read out the Vatican Billions in particular, uh, or the Vatican Billions, I had that whole audiobook on my channel by Avram Manhattan. But in, in particular, from like chapter 26 to 30, there's information on the Roberto Calvi, Michelle Sendona banking uh, scandal, the Banco Ambrosiano crisis. But this article has more great information on that. This uh, high-level P2 Mason was a Knight of Malta, Count Umberto Ortellini. Orto. Yeah, this guy here. This this was the this guy was like one of the head P2 Masons, and he was a Knight of Malta. And the Michelle Sendona like was Jesuit trained. Roberto Calvi was a Knight of Malta, but they ended up assassinating Calvi. But um, there's good information there. Well, absolutely. Just looking at some of the co comments, yeah, the Jesuits are absolutely in control of every party in politics. Absolutely, <laughs> it's a, it's not an understatement. Actually, like saying like it's kind of you're kind of in a lose lose situation when you're telling people this because like. If you're if you're talking to someone who is completely asleep and hasn't don't doesn't know any history, like it, it's you you come off like you're crazy by saying that the Jesuits control everything, but it, you know people like willingly deceive themselves because they just think the Jesuits are, you know, just priests that just uh, you know do like their ceremonial rites and that's a yeah. This is a great uh, bulletin here. Good information, especially this article on the Knights of Malta. See so the Knights of Malta in the Americans in Central America. Here's a photo, like information. The uh, Archbishop of Chicago, Paul Marcinicus, was running the Institute of Religious Works, uh, and you can actually see a picture of uh, Martin Luther King with uh, Archbishop Paul Marcinicus. Paul, Mar Marcinicus was like golf buddies with Sendona. Um, you know, get good information on the like, uh, military coups in Brazil in the 80s. Yeah, and then the other there's uh talks about other uh, sub branches of the order of malta like the knights of lazarus yeah so this is a really good bulletin i put this up on archive.org it should be finished uh synthesizing anytime now i recommend you guys check it out well you know some of them are jews well you know the uh there there was Jews were officially banned from the Jesuit order for over like 300 years. Like you had to convert to Catholicism to enter the Jesuits. Just in, in particular, I think that I know the second general, uh, Diego Lanez, was a converso. Um, you know, the majority of the early Jesuits, though, were Spanish Basques. They weren't uh, they weren't Jews. And interestingly, uh, Diego de Gardaqui, the Spanish uh, ambassador to America when America was formed, who the Jesuit priest John Carroll was praising, uh, Diego de Gardaqui, his banking family, like uh, funded the like 60 percent of the uh, military uh, apparatus of the American forces at this time, like thousands of uh, pounds of gunpowder, etc. But uh, Diego de Gardaqui was a Basque, just like uh, Ignatius Loyola. And uh, I've even seen that like Loyola's DNA test like, has even been done, and he was uh, he was a Basque. But uh, yeah, that's all for this one, YouTube. Peace and love, and uh, Namaste.